Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the December meeting of the Wisconsin chapter of the National Railway Historical Society. We've got an excellent program for you tonight. Al Baker uh, has three programs in one that he's going to share with us, um, and I I saw a preview of them the other day, and you're going to want to stick around for the entire duration because it is a fantastic program and um, well worth your while, and we'll introduce that in a moment. But first, we're going to talk about some things happening in our near future. Um, we're going to start our uh, members' uh, gab fest again. Uh, we're going to resume it next week, Friday. Uh, so we're, um, we're, we're just going to get together in a Zoom room like this. Anybody who's interested, any member who is interested in joining the discussion of railroad topics, uh, welcome to do, do so. We're going to meet at 7.30 next Friday night, the 9th of um, uh, December. So that's one week from tonight, the uh, NRHS Wisconsin Gab Fest. Um, and it's very informal. Uh, just, just check in and uh, bless you over there, and um, um, hope you can make that. And we will send out an email to our members about that. Uh, for those of you who are not members, um, we would love it if you would become a member. And it's very simple to do so. Uh, just uh, hand 20 bucks to our treasurer, and I don't see her here tonight. The, oh, so Dan's working. So, but, but Keith here, our vice president, would be happy to take your $20 to become a member of, and of the Wisconsin chapter. No tips, no tipping allowed. So, um, or uh, go directly to our website, www.nrhswis.org. Okay, so um, GabFest next week, then on uh, Tuesday, the 19th of December, uh, our uh, informal online slideshow featuring Ron Burkhart, L. Ron Lawrence, Andy Worley, Ed Kohler, and Mike Juhas. So um, that's our online only slideshow on the 19th of December. It's a Tuesday. So, and I think it's Tuesday. the 20th. 20th. You are right. The 20th. Thank you. The 20th. Thank you. Uh, so yes, the 20th of uh, December, uh, and I hope you can make that as well. So um, a lot of folks have renewed their membership. If you have not uh, renewed, uh, please take a moment to do so. I got a list from Tara today of everybody who, who sent in checks. Thank you. Um, otherwise, you can um, renew directly on our website. So, uh, and if you are a member of the NRHS, it's very simple to renew your NRHS membership as well. Um, I know so many people have. Uh, just go to nrhs.com and look for the join and renew link on the NRHS website. It's very simple to do. Um, I'll tell you how simple it is because um, I did it myself and it worked for me. So. So Al Baker is our presenter. Al has been a railroad photographer for 50 about 50 years, at least. I would say a little bit better now. Yeah. And um, has a, a lot of experience. Um, he's, he's a longtime photographer. Uh, he and the other Baker brother, Bob, uh, have, uh, have been longtime photographers in the, the Milwaukee area here. Uh, and Al is a longtime member of our chapter as well. So his program is uh, divided up into three parts. The first part will, uh, and I'm I'm not going to really get into a huge discussion about uh, what this is all because you're gonna you're gonna talk far better and more comprehensively than I I certainly will. Uh, but the first part will be a, a look at uh, Canadian Pacific's heavy haul uh, from basically Chicago to Lacrosse ish, and uh, second part. We'll look at some of the work that he's done here in the last year or so as a newly minted drone pilot. So um, he's going to show you how he gets high. Uh, 
which Al's uh, career was in law enforcement, by the way. So, so I didn't really say that. Um, and then, uh, and then the third part of his program is uh, uh, a trip to, to Green Bay in 1982. Uh, that again, I looked at some of this stuff the other day. I'll share some of it, and it's just fabulous stuff. So, with that, um, would we give a warm Wisconsin chapter NRHS welcome to Al Baker, please? Well, first of all, thank you uh, for inviting me tonight. And uh, uh, when Dave first talked to me about putting on a program, he said, well, maybe about two carousels, because uh, I'm used to presenting slide uh, presentations, not uh, Zoom presentations. Um, I didn't really have enough uh, uh, on one particular subject to do two carousels. So I made three programs in uh, one here tonight. Uh, the first will be, um, I was out in Connecticut till 2016 and came back then. And uh, the first section is all photos I've taken along the CP main line between Chicago and La Crosse, uh, just to give a little sample of uh, what I've been doing the last four or five years in this area. Uh, predominantly passenger trains because they're scheduled, they're easy to find, uh, although there are a lot of freight trains too. And uh, some of my favorite photo locations uh, along the CP. The second part, um, actually with the help of one of our chapter members, Brian Heschel, I became a drone pilot uh, in late June this year. And uh, that's one of the values of the NRHS is that uh, Mike referred me to Brian, who was very helpful in terms of getting me set up with the equipment and uh, uh, showing me how to do things. And uh, he's a tech person, so he answered a lot of my questions. So just uh, oh, uh, 40 or 50 uh, quick shots of uh, my drone experience. And then finally, I'm going to uh, present, uh, first time I've done a scan slideshow where I scanned about 120 slides. Uh, I hope they turned out okay in terms of uh, the reproduction quality, but it's a, a trip to Madison, or I'm sorry, Green Bay, Wisconsin, uh, May 13th through May 16th, 1982. And I've been a long time Northwestern uh, fan, and uh, that is significant because that was the uh, birth of the uh, Chicago Northwestern Steam Program, the uh, departure of the Prosperity Special from Green Bay on the 16th of May in 1982. And it was also in conjunction with the uh, CNNW Historical Society annual meeting uh, in Green Bay that weekend. Uh, plus, there was just a lot of good trains, a lot of uh, activity that you just cannot get today. So I want to share some of that with you. So I'll uh, talk relatively fast to keep things uh, moving along here. Uh, and we're going to start with the CP program. And we're starting right at uh, milepost 1.2, uh, CP Morgan in Chicago. Highly recommended if you've never been there. Uh, we're showing a picture of the Milwaukee or Metro's Milwaukee Road uh, MP36 backing down to the station. And um, especially in the afternoon, you got a great backdrop uh, with all the big buildings constant activity between the uh, inbound and outbound equipment moves. And uh, you'll see Metra, you'll see uh, on uh, the uh, West Line, the North, the North Line, you have Amtrak, uh, the Hiawatha trains and the uh, um, Empire Builders. So it's a constant activity. And if you don't have enough, uh, two blocks over is the Northwestern's West Line. So there's a lot of trains right in this area. It's a safe area. Uh, and uh, last time I was down there in the afternoon, I must've shot 400 pictures uh, in, in a, a couple hours there. But that's the Milwaukee Roads, the heritage unit, the, the Metro runs. And here's the same uh, engine on outbound movement there at the CP Morgan. And you can see the great uh, background here. And like I say, you get Metro, you get Amtrak. Uh, and just beyond CP Morgan, it starts to climb up to the elevation uh, and uh, crosses the Northwestern, that Western Avenue Tower. And that's what you're looking at is the, the slight curve to the uh, right and the uh, uh, elevation the, to Western Avenue. Tower A2. Uh, next location, this is uh, Tower A20, 20 miles out of Union Station, and that's the Northwestern's uh, Milwaukee sub, or uh, I guess the Northwestern call it Milwaukee sub, it's UP's Milwaukee subdivision in the background. CP gets onto the uh, uh, UP here at uh, Techni, at Tower A20, and they take the uh, the freight line to Bensonville, and uh, which continues on into uh, uh, proviso. But here's a uh, northbound number seven. Uh, and just to my right, where I took the picture, is where the uh, cutover track up to the, and it, it climbs the elevation. Here's a metro train at the same location, kind of an over and under shot, uh, because we have a UP, uh, I believe it was an ethanol train uh, uh, crossing above us here. Uh, in terms of catching a southbound movement, it's not a real good location. Um, it used to be wide open, but Metra uh, put a, a maintenance garage right in the middle of it, kind of ruins your picture here at A20, but it's a, it's a good location. Uh, if you want to see a lot of trains. Uh, this is at Deerfield, uh, mile post 24 on the CNM. 
And uh, again, this is right between I-94 and US-41, uh, about equidistant between either of the highways. So if you're, you're heading down to Chicago, it's a, a good jumping off point uh, and uh, it's a uh, good parking and uh, uh, you got the commuter trains and freight traffic here. This is a tail end of the same train. It was a foggy uh, morning uh, in uh, 2019. I, my son was working in Chicago at the time and took him down there and uh, uh, took some train photos on the way back. And it's a little bit north of uh, the Deerfield Station, uh, um, just taken last summer. Uh, another great location uh, on the uh, CPCNM is uh, Lake Forest. It's about mile post 30. And the reason it's a good location is you have uh, good sight lines, both north and south. You have signals visible both north and south. So you know when a train is coming, you have freight traffic, you have Amtrak traffic, and you have CP traffic. And up to a couple of years ago, you even had a McDonald's there, but the, that's been closed. So, but uh, uh, there's good parking, uh, good sight lines, and uh, a very safe location. Uh, here's an ethanol, Southwall ethanol train at Lake Forest uh, passing, uh, I believe at that time it was train 198, uh, the big uh, intermodal train uh, to Vancouver from Chicago. And this is obviously a pre-COVID shot uh, because look at the train length. Uh, I guess it's uh, at least six, maybe seven cars uh, with uh, one of the uh, F-40 cab cars leading. Like say this freight traffic here and CP is one of those railroads where you don't know whose railroad this really is because there's a, uh, a lot of uh, foreign engines online here yet uh, Norfolk Southern and CSX uh, leading a CP freight. Again, that foggy morning uh, back in December uh, with the Amtrak uh, through Lake Forest here. A little better weather, this is a 4th of July uh, at uh, Lake Forest. And uh, it was double headed on the hind end of pushing here uh, into Chicago. And you see, it's got one of the old uh, Amtrak F 59s uh, that the Metro purchased and did a quick repaint and uh, put them in service. And I'm not sure which engine was ailing or why they needed two engines, but uh, I suspect maybe the F 4109 uh, with all the black smoke might have been a problem, problem child on this train. Uh, another good location if you. Uh, are down in Lake Forest, just north of Highway 60, the old Armour Estate is now a forest preserve, and there's a nice pedestrian bridge. Um, this is actually a northbound train uh, going away shot. They, uh, uh, but it's a, you have a nice overhead, and it's a, a nice uh, uh, forested area that you can uh, take pictures. It's just, just north of Highway uh, 60 when you get over the station. And of course, round out, uh, very good location. Again, you have a, a bike path overhead, that uh, allows uh, for some decent photos in both directions. And the rail fans down there are pretty good about uh, bringing their own shears and keeping uh, the trees and bushes out of the way. There's some pretty good sight lines there. Here's uh, looking in the other direction, looking north, and that's a train off the north, uh, the Fox Lake line uh, coming onto the uh, uh, CP here. And if you've been down there lately, they added the third track uh, to the uh, CNM here. Uh, I, I haven't seen it, they're still working on it. Uh, uh, getting the signals and whatnot uh, configured, but uh, uh, a good location, a busy location. Another metro train heading out the uh, northwest line, or the uh, West Fox Lake line, I guess, Milwaukee North line. Ethanol train, you see a fair number of ethanol trains on the uh, CP here, and the uh, uh, number of engines is kind of unusual, especially this is probably an empty ethanol train for probably moving some power. And then here's uh, southbound. At this time, it was 198, but uh, they've renumbered this train to 148. But that's the uh, train from Vancouver. Usually has some auto racks on the front end, a uh, single unit on the front, and uh, another engine buried uh, mid train. Uh, so, and there's Amtrak number seven. And Amtrak number eight. And probably now is the time to get your uh, P-42 shots because uh, it won't be long now before we're saying, hey, where did all the uh, P-42s go? Because uh, you're seeing more and more chargers on uh, 7 and 8, although uh, I think today it's about five hours late from Seattle. And uh, there's been some 12 and 14-hour delays. There was a 24-hour delay uh, just recently, so I'm not sure how reliable these new chargers are. But I think that's uh, teething problems any new locomotive has, so I'm sure they'll solve it. Oops. Went too fast. Russell Road, the state line, while this is actually about a half mile in Illinois, um, 
uh, it's uh, yeah, kind of a tough uh, shot when you're looking south, much better shot when you're uh, you're looking to the north with a southbound train here, but that's uh, right at the, the state line. This is in Kenosha County. I call it the, uh, the uh, hunting uh, crossing, but there's a, a hunting club here. It's 113th Street uh, in Kenosha County, and you got signals there and a uh, decent uh, wide open photo location plus a place to park. A train looking uh, in the other direction at the same location. And you see it's right by the industrial park just south of uh, where the old Pleasant Prairie power plant was. This is Bain Station Road, a little bit further north. Uh, the power plant would be off to the right. Uh, this is Amtrak number eight. Um, the problem with this location, it's it's wide open, but uh, there's not a lot of places to park in Bain Station Road, uh, like most roads in Southeast Wisconsin now are fairly busy roads. This is Highway 50 or Truesdell, and this is a southbound uh, one horse uh, wonder here on uh, the CP. Um, if you've been down here at all lately, uh, they have been working for two years now, expanding Highway 50 to uh, three lanes in each direction. So there's been a lot of bridge work, a lot of uh, Form Bs, uh, and a lot of radio talk, uh, although it looks like they're getting close to, to being finished with the project now. Well, anyway, this Highway L in Kenosha County, southbound number eight. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure why he had two baggage cars that day, but he did have three private cars on the, uh, the hind end. Uh, and I think that's why I was at Highway L that particular day. So I just had a tip that they were coming. A little bit further north, uh, this is Summers. There's a talking detector, milepost 57.6. And uh, this is uh, taken 2017. And you'll notice they have a high wide uh, detector, which disappeared uh, within six months of this photo. There's another shot with the high wide detector. Oops. But that's what it looks like today. That was taken in April of this year. There's uh, just the detector there. Talk, I'm not sure why they don't need that protection anymore, but obviously they've solved their problem and it's uh, disappeared. Shot at the same location in uh, uh, the winter of 2021. So that's Summers. Uh, highway A in uh, Kenosha County. Uh, it's a decent spot. It's wide open. And it's one of the few roads where there's not a lot of traffic. So uh, it's a, a spot I like uh, because uh, it's good South Mountain photo location. And uh, you don't have to be worried about uh, getting run over by a errant motorist. This is Highway KR, and this was taken last April. Um, Highway KR is the south limits of the Foxconn project. If anybody's familiar with that, that was uh, going to bring thir 13 or maybe it was 28,000 new jobs to Southeast Wisconsin. Well, it's, it's brought a handful, but in the meantime, they did all kinds of infrastructure work, including bridges over the railroad. And this picture actually was taken before the bridge was open, but that's uh, uh, a good photo location if you're down on Highway KR, because uh, you can get off the road uh, and park off the road. And uh, they've got a fence up there, so you got to shoot through the fence. Uh, like I say, this was taken before the, the fence was put up. So, and it was uh, one of the... Uh, I say April of this year, so the chargers were relatively new to the Empire Builder. This is uh, Brown Road, or I call it South Sturdivant, and uh, this is where Brian and I did a lot of uh, uh, practice with the drones. Uh, and the reason I threw this particular picture was taken in 2017 is that you, you see in that picture both the uh, Chicago and Milwaukee passing tracks were still in existence. So they have uh, were cut when they uh, widened the road for Foxconn, as you can see here. And then uh, uh, they've been completely torn out uh, when they redid Highway 11. Uh, but uh, at one time, uh, freight trains used to go in a hole here to let the Hiawathas pass. But uh, that, that was uh, the way it used to be. Again, whose railroad is this with Union Pacific Power? Uh, this is also a Brown Road. You see the passing track there for the Chicago passing track. Uh, but it's just a hospital train when the Talgo sets were brought back to Beach Grove from Seattle. Um, and uh, as it happens a lot of times on the CNM here, uh, there was another train in the picture at the same time. Uh, that was actually 198 going in the same direction. And uh, fortunate I didn't get cut off here. And this is uh, the two uh, C one groups uh, private cars on the rear of number eight uh, or number seven uh, this summer also at Brown Road. And you can see the, uh, the right of wave of the, the old passing track there. And this was our one week foray into the new uh, Midwest coaches. Uh, last April, uh, there was a coach on the Hiawatha trains, one of the consists uh, for familiarization purposes. And 
that's the last we heard of them. We haven't seen another one since, but uh, this is a uh, Brown Road uh, with uh, the Midwest coach on the front end there. Uh, also April this year, a weed spraying train. Uh, this was a Sunday. It was a, they actually sprayed the entire CNM. They went down one main and came back up the uh, the, the other main. Uh, putters along about 20 miles an hour. And uh, uh, like I say, I, I saw them on the way down. I caught them on the way back. Too. Uh, also at Brown Road here. And uh, this is uh, where uh, the train on the uh, left uh, caught a knuckle there. And uh, the train on the right is uh, brought him a knuckle. And uh, they're coming alongside. And he had, but the interesting part, he had the uh, North Fork Southern Interstate uh, Heritage Unit in the consist. And I'm not sure why, but uh, the dispatcher told them to change crews. And so they swapped trains and uh, but got a nice picture of the, the power uh, side by side here. Uh, this is Highway 11 in Sturtevant. This is the, um, uh, again, whose railroad is this? Uh, there's uh, five engines and, uh, you know, from, uh, from four different railroads. So. Um, this is uh, where the old Sturtevant station was. Uh, we don't see a lot of cab cars anymore. There are some running, but not, not uh, as many as uh, uh, two or three years ago. And you wonder why is there four engines on this train? Uh, there's uh, three Amtraks and this VNSF unit, but there was five fabric cars on the rear end. Uh, so uh, the same type of cars we saw on a Highway L uh, on a different photo. But, and also you can see in this photo, the, uh, the passing tracks in use uh, uh, for car storage at that time. And like I say, the CNM, sometimes you get the uh, rolling meets. Uh, in this particular case, uh, number eight was sitting between uh, uh, 198 and 199 at Sturtevant. So a couple of nice pictures here of uh, passing each other. This is the new Sturtevant station about uh, a mile north of uh, where the uh, old Sturtevant station was. Uh, I believe it opened like 2006, 2007 in that time frame. So it's not, not new anymore. Uh, number seven uh, approaching the station there. During COVID number seven was making a daily stop at the Sturtevant number eight was, but uh, that's since uh, uh, changed. The uh, veterans uh, cab car at Sturtevant. And that's a cab car coming over Highway 20 at the Sturtevant station, just a, a different location. You don't see a lot of photos taken here because you got to kind of crawl into the weeds. And uh, it used to be pretty common on the CNM. I don't see it as much anymore, but uh, uh, there was a stretch in time where crews were changing on the fly at a location chosen by the dispatcher. And here, uh, trains uh, are changing crews right at the Sturtevant Depot. Uh, and uh, both these trains are about two miles long. So they got Highway 11 to the south block and Spring Street to the north block. And uh, besides uh, about 15 minutes to power up the um, uh, computer that controls the uh, traffic control system, uh, get everything logged in, uh, they all to hold the union meeting. So like half hour, they've got two major roads in Racine County tied up while they're uh, changing crews. Uh, I, they don't seem to do this much anymore, but the, the, you know, the, the one train was just 60 miles into its run and they're getting back on a train going back to their initial terminal. So we see a lot of, uh, especially as of late, BNSF power on the number eight. Uh, they have a hard time keeping the things running across uh, the northern tier there. And so this is actually pretty common uh, with the uh, Edster event. Uh, and this was back in COVID where it was actually making a station stop here. This is uh, at High Spring Street, which is about a mile north of uh, the uh, new Sturtevant station. The strangest thing I've ever seen. Uh, that train, uh, the 500, the P32 is going 70 miles an hour, maybe 79 miles an hour. And I bet that high rail truck was going 50 or 60 because uh, he wanted to stay with the train to take advantage of the uh, crossing protection there at Spring Street. But I've never seen a high rail truck go that fast. He, he was he was not uh, winning the race, but he was he was keeping up. And I like, man, <laughs> that is unsafe. <laughs> also at Spring Street again, uh, whose railroad is this? Uh, the CSX power on the CP here. Uh, Franksville, uh, off to the uh, left there is the old uh, Franks uh, Cabbage Factory, which used to have rail service. Uh, they still raise a lot of cabbage here, but it's, it's trucked other locations for processing. Uh, this is just uh, north of Franksville. Um, it's always puzzled me. You see the signals are 
milepost 66 uh, and then right next to it's milepost 67 so i'm not sure what that's all about but the always a, a source of puzzling for me anyway northbound hiawatha train uh another northbound with a uh, p32 uh, pushing on it so and uh, this is the cp business train april of uh, 2018 at uh, adams road there uh, up at the uh, uh, Six Mile Road or Caledonia, and that's where the uh, uh, CP Holiday Train is going to stop. Uh, uh, I believe next Tuesday, maybe Thursday. I don't remember the exact date, but the, they stop at a local tavern here in Caledonia uh, and uh, do their half-hour show or whatever. But this is a northbound freight running wrong main, and this is a southbound freight running the correct main. But that's the views at Six Mile in Caledonia. This is at six and a half mile road, which is the uh, referred uh, to the railroad as Oakwood uh, interlocking. Um, six and a half mile road, they closed the crossing when they built the interlocking there. So if you wanna get off the highway and not be bothered by anybody, this is a good location for taking photos because uh, uh, either side, the road is closed and uh, uh, good uh, photo direct or good photos both directions. Seven mile road and uh, uh, the reason I was able to get this shot, you see they kind of clear cut the field there, but uh, uh, it wasn't always like that. But uh, that's number seven. Now he's just about ready to cross into Milwaukee County. Another view, uh, uh, number, uh, it's, a, it's a train 338 uh, crossing Seven Mile Road. But I like this photo because uh, up in the upper uh, left-hand corner is a Southwest plane uh, approaching Milwaukee and my, my son flies for Southwest, so. Uh, this is at uh, Oakwood Road, another detector, so milepost 72.6 uh, in uh, Oak Creek. Same location, uh, then uh, you got number eight meeting uh, 336. Uh, number uh, eight, uh, oh, got a train. <laughs> How about that? But that doesn't happen too often. <laughs> uh, Putes Road, uh, a little bit further north, uh, one of the few grade crossings actually in Milwaukee County, uh, south of uh, south of the city. So here's a frac sand uh, also at Putes Road, and uh, uh, I thought a heavy train like that would have a hard time getting up Lake Hill. Man, that thing walked right up the hill. Uh, we almost didn't catch it because we. We shot it in downtown and thought, well, it'd be a piece of cake to get it at Putes Road, and it wasn't. Uh, we, we just made it. Uh, College Avenue, uh, right off to the uh, right of the train is where Lake Tower was. Uh, and most of the Hiawatha trains cross over from uh, one to two main here, because uh, as for now, uh, airport uh, station, which is uh, not in this picture, it wasn't built at the time, but uh, uh, oh, it is in the picture, I guess. Uh, but, uh, uh, it only has a platform on the uh, east side. Looking in the other direction, train seven from the College Avenue Bridge. There's Milwaukee Airport. Uh, this is April of this year. And actually, a surprise, this is a midday train and 15, 20 people got off it. So I'm surprised at how popular it was. And a very nice station, too. Uh, Grange Avenue, uh, just south uh, or just north of the airport. Uh, this is a southbound train. Um, they are rebuilding the bridge there, and uh, this used to be uh, no fences, uh, no ghetto grills. But uh, I'm kind of concerned that uh, when they're done with the project, they'll have fences to shoot through here. But uh, uh, Grange Avenue, this is a north uh, southbound. Here's a northbound Amtrak, and you can see the airport stop just under the the bridge there, the airport spur. Another southbound uh, ethanol uh, loads. And this is Waterford Avenue. Uh, it was taken this October of this year. And uh, that uh, engine on the, is not a DPU. It's, it was going up to Minneapolis for a special movement the next day that uh, brought a number of private cars uh, back east. And that the private car is a Puget Sound, which was just donated to the uh, Railroad Museum in Duluth. And, I read plans where you're going to be able to rent that car and they'll haul it up to a siding about halfway up to uh, two harbors and then you can stay as long as you want and then they'll haul it back. Uh, uh, no idea what the pricing and whatnot, but uh, uh, 
it was just donated to the, and then this was the trip up to Duluth. The uh, Kinnikinnick River Bridge, uh, Maple Street, uh, good photo location. Uh, got the bike path there. Parking sometimes a little bit of a uh, issue, but you always have nice views of the skyline, and uh, it's wide open there. This is a kind of an unusual move. One of the uh, Portage coal trains uh, actually going south through Milwaukee and into Chicago. Uh, they normally go west from uh, Portage and I believe get turned over to the UP. Uh, I'm not sure if it's the Twin Cities or if it's in Clinton, but uh, uh, the movement is usually uh, north or uh, west out of Portage. Here is uh, Amtrak number seven. And the reason I was here, uh, you'll see here in just a minute, uh, the Apropos convention, uh, they had seven private cars on the, the hind end. Uh, it was pretty, the weather wasn't particularly conducive for photos, but uh, the subject was uh, great. So, uh, Greenfield Avenue. I didn't know we had a harbor district in Milwaukee, but there you go. And there's a telephoto shot there from Maple Street. Uh, it's, uh, sometimes you'll catch two trains there at once. The uh, Menominee drawbridge on the uh, east side of the depot. And there's a, the Fraxan train I mentioned at Puce uh, Road uh, coming out of the depot on Saturday morning. Number eight coming out of the depot there. Interesting, he's got a P40, a P42 combination, which uh, you don't see a lot. And this is actually taken from the Sixth Street Viaduct, and it's taken about three years ago. A uh, private party train uh, for, for somebody I don't know who, but the, they chartered a train, uh, came up to Milwaukee, and they all got off, uh, went on a bus, went out to dinner, and uh, uh, went back. But uh, uh, experimenting with a little uh, low light photography because uh, this was in January of, I believe, 2018. There's a ground level view of the train, and the, the charter wire private cars were also present. So it, People look pretty busy. Another view from Sixth Street. This is the first run of the uh, Chargers up the Milwaukee and Hiawatha service. And uh, you, with a close eye, will know that it's uh, lettered for Siemens, not Amtrak. And again, you got uh, Kuritas in the background there and uh, another train. So it looks like uh, Milwaukee's busier than it is. Just west of the depot, this is uh, just before 13th Street. Get the Marquette interchange in the background. Look in the other direction on a sunnier day after uh, we do all our medical appointments at Freighter at Milwaukee. So uh, this was a, a post medical appointment day. Out uh, Hart Park in Wauwatosa. It's getting kind of boxed in. It's not as good a location as it used to be, but uh, uh, you have signals that'll let you know that there's a train coming here. And there's number seven in the same location. A little bit further west, this is off the Mayfair Road Bridge. Uh, that's Highway 4145 in the background, westbound train. And this is from the Watertown Plank Bridge, just right around the corner from the, the first picture. And it's he's crossing under the UP's, excuse me, Milwaukee Division uh, line to Butler Yard. A little bit further west, here's uh, number eight going through Elm Grove at uh, Watertown Plank Road. And uh, I have uh, literally hundreds of pictures here. I'm sure a lot of you do at the Duplainville and uh, kind of an interesting location. I mean, sometimes I've seen 75, 80 fans there on a good Saturday morning or good uh, uh, Sunday afternoon. It's a, a magnet for fans because we've got the uh, very busy CN line and the uh, well, somewhat busy CP line. So a little different weather at Duplainville. Is at Pewaukee, where uh, double track, it's an eastbound train. He's about to enter double track here at uh, Pewaukee. Yeah. Santa Fe War Bonnet, second unit out, which was uh, unusual. There's looking in the other direction, number seven, heading west, uh, leaving the double track at Pewaukee. And a little bit further west, that's uh, Highway 16, and Capitol Drive is off to the left there, number seven. And um, this is Neshota, and uh, it's an end or something road. Uh, runs along the track for a mile, mile and a half here in Neshota. So. 
um, Gifford Road, just uh, east of Oconomowoc. Uh, again, whose railroad is this? It's, uh, and here in Oconomowoc, uh, the station's now a restaurant. And uh, I cannot believe that this is allowed, but uh, you know, Oconomowoc's in the O'Horn zone. And uh, the traffic is very, very close to uh, the train traffic. And they go through here at 70 miles an hour without horns. So, uh, I'm surprised there aren't more accidents out there. The other direction, but you see how close the cars are to the tracks there. And this is about a half mile west of the depot there, uh, lumber yard, uh, you know, kind of walk. Got lucky, got two trains there. Uh, Cooney Siding, which is uh, on the uh, west side of Oconomowoc. And there's another view off the bridge at Cooney Siding, uh, and that's uh, number uh, eight. And you got to get here uh, when the corn is low, because uh, it kind of makes the uh, shot tough when the, the corn is high. Uh, Exonia. And this is a water town just before the diamond with the. Uh... Oh. All right. Water town, just uh, shy of the uh, diamond with the UP line that goes down to from climbing down to Fort Atkinson. Now we're looking west at the same location. This is a very good photo location. It's uh, parking stuff, and uh, uh, you can't get near the diamond without trespassing. Or with a drone, yes. <laughs> Here I actually pulled into the dairy parking lot and snapped this. It's right by the diamond. Uh, I did trespass. And this is on the west side of uh, Watertown, and, and that's Highway 26 that uh, number seven is going under. And that's uh, number eight. And uh, I like this one because it's uh, in the middle of the summer, and look at all the bugs under the headlight there. It's uh, almost black. Uh, Reedsville and uh, a lot of power here. Uh, famous on the Milwaukee Road for the floods in the Reedsville Swamp and uh, causing a lot of detours. But uh, I don't recall any of late that uh, they've had a detour. But uh, the uh, swamp or the marshes just to the uh, the trains actually in it uh, to the uh, southeast. Marjorie Road, which is about oh maybe a mile and a half, two miles west there. It's one of the few overheads uh, out here uh, west of Watertown that. Uh, uh, your landmark here, if you're going to turn, there's a, a grocery store that the Amish run. That uh, you, you turn there, you'll get on the get on the bridge. This is Astico, which is uh, about four or five miles uh, east of uh, Columbus. Uh, another overhead shot. And this is at Columbus. So there's actually bus connection. I believe it comes from uh, Madison. Although the, the I got the picture of the bus, nobody got on, nobody got off. It's the first Amtrak stop west of uh, Milwaukee and actually a very nicely maintained building. Uh, and they have a caretaker that uh, runs a pretty good show there. I was impressed at uh, how clean everything was and how orderly everything was. This is uh, number seven stopping at Columbus. Uh, excuse me, number eight, number eight, eastbound. And uh, I don't see it a lot, but uh, they actually pulled out the wheelchair ramp and let somebody off uh, here at Columbus. Number eight uh, in the winter, Columbus. There's an overhead, uh, oh, about well, two or three blocks just west of the depot there. And uh, it's not a good shot because of the foliage, uh, better in the uh, early spring uh, than in the middle of the summer, but uh, you can make it work. So inside of the Columbus depot, uh, like I said, it's uh, very nice. Uh, they do a good job here. This is a, actually you just made a stop, uh, eastbound number eight crossed into Crawford River in uh, Columbus. Probably another good drone shot here with the river. Got to check that out sometime. And a freight train. Any question about the milepost? It's milepost 150 <laughs> from uh, Chicago. This is uh, Johnson Road. It's between uh, Columbus and Fall River. Um, one of the few crossings between those two cities. Um, Parking's a little hard here, but uh, caught westbound. Uh, this is uh, 148. Like I say, usually has some water racks up front before the containers. Uh, 
you know the economy is good when you see a lot of auto racks on the, the front of 199 uh, so we're 149 now amtrak 7 at the same location and uh the local this is a at least the last time I talked to anybody in Portage, this is a job that works six days a week uh, at a Portage, goes to work at seven in the morning, three days a week goes to Madison and back, and then the other three days goes over to Watertown and uh, back with the local job. There's a couple of businesses in uh, uh, Columbus that uh, get cars. This is Fall River, and there's a mill there, and uh, this was on a Saturday morning, they were switching the, the mill there. And uh, you may recall the early Maybe it was late 70s, early 80s. Amtrak had a, a bad derailment crossing over here at uh, Fall River, and the fireman on the train was killed in the uh, the accident. And just just west of Fall River, there's a couple of uh, overhead uh, bridges that uh, suitable for photos. Same location, looking in the other direction with number eight. And uh, I didn't get the front of the train, but I had to get the rainbow. This is uh, just a little bit further west. Uh, uh, if you ever get to Rio, it's on Highway 16. Uh, as you come out of town, the city has a little reservoir there that runs right next to the tracks. So another good drone location one of these days. Uh, this is Salisbury Lane. It's about a mile, mile and a half west of uh, Rio. Uh, the, the tracks are elevated and... Uh, uh, it's wide open, and uh, generally, well, in late uh, March or May, uh, early uh, April, you'll have enough light to get number seven going west here. And I got this one horse wonder, but uh, same location, a different time, but he had five mid five mid train helpers here, so it wasn't really a one horse wonder. But and this is actually on the uh, east side of Portage, south side of Portage. I'm not sure geographically. Uh, um, he's on the Madison line, and that's a uh, Portage uh, coal train. Get your pictures of these guys now. They've only got about two years left before they close this plant. It got like additional two-year reprieve just recently. And it's a big swamp there. Uh, uh, if you can avoid the power lines, again, that'd make a neat drone shot because you, you can see off in the distance uh, the train on the main line and then uh, the, the coal train on the... Uh, uh, line to portage, uh, I mean, line to the power plant. Uh, portage is a good location to spend some time, especially if you got a scanner. Um, fair amount of activity, and uh, there's a lot of talking on the radio in terms of what's going on, what's coming, what's going. So, uh, and this is uh, just south of town. Uh, there's two great crossings just south of town, and if they're busy at the depot, they'll change crews out here, and that's that's what's happening here. There, uh, number seven is due, and so this train is changing uh, outside of town. Same location, they're fueling the train, uh, the changing crews out here. This is uh, actually looking in the other direction, looking uh, west on the. Uh, he's running. He's actually over the canal the Portage Canal, and that's Highway 33 bridge in the background. There was a, a movable drawbridge and a tower here at one time, but uh, long since gone, the southbound or eastbound train. This is the Madison job coming back into Portage from uh, spending a day at Madison. And uh, you can see he's on the Madison line. It bends off to the, the right, uh, just uh, far end of the photo there. And that's where we got that picture of the coal train just a, a few shots ago. They're uh, Happy Lloyd, uh, I guess Every Child Matters unit uh, south out of Portage. Uh, don't recommend this shot, Highway 33 bridge. Uh, it's, uh, you're really uh, taking your life in your hands. It's a very narrow bridge without a sidewalk. And uh, uh, I snuck out there and got a quick shot, but it's it's not a good photo location. Uh, not as quite a nice depot in uh, as uh, Columbus, but this is the Amtrak uh, depot in Portage. And uh, it's just a small uh, brick facility for the two trains that visit there. This was uh, on a uh, Friday evening when, uh, believe it or not, both seven and eight uh, met here at Portage. And so a lot of photo opportunities at low light. This is uh, the Highway 16 bridge on the west side of town. And this is a train coming into town. Uh, and that highway bridge in the background is I-39. Uh, it's not a bad photo location. It's wide. Uh, you, you're not, there's a sidewalk there. The only problem you got power lines that uh, 
sometimes get in your photo. Looking in the other direction, this is a westbound train leaving the leaving the portage yard. And uh, there's two grade crossings just uh, west of town. This is the first grade crossing, uh, uh, and that's I-39 in the background there. This is the second grade crossing. It's called Industrial Drive, and uh, that's a westbound train. Here's uh, an eastbound train at the same location. Uh, quite a, uh, it's a nice day. This is a uh, oh, three or four miles uh, further west. Uh, Highway 16 follows the tracks between Portage and the Dells very closely for the most part. There's not a lot of grade crossings, and especially in the afternoon, if you jump on the west side of the tracks there, uh, you're not going to be able to get any other pictures, but this is one of the few grade crossings. Uh, there's a passing siding, uh, Lewiston. Uh, this is uh, the east end of Lewiston, a train coming out of the passing siding. Another train coming out of the siding at uh, Lewiston. And this is a running meet that uh, occurred at Lewiston. This is Lewiston West. You see the black uh, ethanol train in the background, and they got train uh, 149 uh, going westbound. And like I say, neither of them had to stop. The uh, siding's like three, four miles long, so it's a uh, it can be done. Wisconsin Dells, a uh, nicely refurbished depot here. This is a southbound train. Um, this is in the winter time or uh, early spring. And this was taken just this August. And this is one of these days where it was uh, 95 degrees out, 95% uh, humidity. And the train was five hours late. And these people were not happy. You'll occasionally see, uh, not so much anymore, but uh, back when the sand business was uh, doing better, they had dispatch light engines from uh, Portage to go pick up a sand train up by uh, Camp Douglas. Of course, that's the Wisconsin River Bridge. Uh, that's on the uh, west side looking east. And there's actually a nice uh, overlook on the east side where you can get a, a shot uh, looking to the west. And if you notice up until that bridge in the back, the highway bridge in the background was built, uh, the uh, highway actually crossed on the lower level of uh, the uh, Milwaukee Road Bridge uh, back in the uh, early 20th century. And there's from the uh, Highway 23 bridge, uh, southbound train, the Dells. This is at uh, Linden Station, southbound train. Uh, Mill Creek siding, which is um, between uh, Lynn Station and Boston. That's Highway 16 bridge in the background. This is a southbound train with a leased unit. And here's a northbound train that was holding for him coming out of the siding. And uh, again, he had a nice looking uh, war bonnet unit. And this was just taken two years ago. So it's neat that they're still running around. This is in Boston. And uh, it's actually a uh, by a scratch and dent uh, food store my like, wife likes to visit. So it's a good uh, chance for me to catch a train. This is uh, actually number eight on a not so good day. Mile post 214 in Boston. Same location, uh, westbound train. And this is on the uh, west side of Boston in the industrial park. And it's uh, Amtrak 7. Uh, used to work, especially in the summertime. Uh, if we go to church in uh, Mawson on a Saturday night, church would get out at 6 and the train would come at 6.15. So it always worked out. Again, these are light engines. This is at New Lisbon. They're, they're going to fetch a sand train. But I, that's not why I was there. Uh, the real reason I was there is that uh, two multi-mark SD40s were uh, coming with a rock train southbound. And uh, this is at New Lisbon where the valley... Uh, Hiawatha and the uh, regular Hiawathas used to meet and exchange passengers. You couldn't tell it today, but a lot of neat pictures from the 60s at this location. Number uh, eight at uh, New Lisbon. And this is actually the uh, west leg of the Y that uh, I'm standing on there. And there's a westbound train, uh, 149 at uh, New Lisbon, kind of neat old house there in the background. Uh, Camp Douglas, uh, must be a three or four mile passing siding, but this is a, a ethanol train taking the siding at Camp Douglas. And he was being pushed by the UP here. I mean, that's Highway 12 uh, and 16 off to the uh, uh, right there. Toma, again, a nice um, 
refurbished station uh, caretaker and uh, there's an Amish fellow there. There's a, I didn't realize, but there's a, a large uh, Amish population uh, in the Toma area and they use Amtrak regularly. Here's a uh, number seven coming into uh, Toma. And there's, a, well, this was last summer. Uh, again, uh, number eight was several hours late, but the Amish people waiting for the uh, train and getting fooled by the headlight from the uh, CSX unit. But eight did show up eventually and everybody got on their way just a couple hours late. Tunnel City, and this is uh, around, well, the track uh, right there in the middle of the train is the where the UP line enters the Milwaukee Road and uses the tunnel there. They actually use trackage rights all the way to Winona now on the UP. And uh, it's hard to get a picture near the, uh, this is the east side of the tunnel, hard to get in there because there's a sand mine uh, at the tunnel there and they're, they're concerned about security and uh, there's all kinds of fences and cameras and uh, it's best just to stay away from that particular location. And here's a, another a shot at uh, the same location, just to back out a little bit further. This is a banger and there's a passing sighting at banger here and he's waiting on number eight. And uh, if you look off to the left of the unit there, you'll see a, a crossing uh, signal. There's a plant there that uh, uh, manufactures railroad ties. So what's creosote on them? I uh, don't remember the name of it, but uh, still an ongoing uh, viable operation. There's a uh, number eight east side of Bangor. This is the uh, west side of Bangor. The uh, red barn is the, <laughs> the name of the photo location. West Salem uh, from the highway bridge. And La Crosse. Uh, again, the depot there is nicely restored and uh, westbound uh, ethanol uh, empties, I believe, inside of the La Crosse depot. Uh, crossing the Black River, not the Mississippi. Uh, they cross the Black River first. Another uh, a possible drone location, but I think you'll need permission because of the airport nearby. This is on the west side at uh, River Junction, uh, and uh, we're actually in Minnesota here, just a couple shots, but the uh, reason I throw this one in, the uh, one of the uh, CP office uh, F units was going down uh, to Iowa for some kind of work. And just north of River Junction with one of their heritage units. So anyway, that's my signal that uh, we're the end of uh, the uh, CP, uh, and I uh, just threw this in because this is what happens when you have a 12-foot truck and you have a 11 and a half foot railroad bridge. Uh, peeled it off very nicely. This is on a five-mile road on the UP Milwaukee subdivision in uh, Racine County, just uh, last spring. All right, uh, just a, a few shots about uh, my experiences with drones, and this goes back to uh, Halloween weekend, October 2019. And it's my brother, Bob, uh, Mike Patrick, Jimmy Inky Jr. and myself. And uh, the first time that I'd ever gone rail fanning with anybody that had a drone, that was Jimmy Inky's drone. And uh, uh, it was kind of neat. And he uh, showed us all the uh, things that could do and everything. And I was especially impressed. This is just the, the little Lomira uh, turn or switcher. And uh, he was good half, three quarters of a mile away from the crossing. And there's really no way we could get a decent shot of it. But uh, Jim just shot his drone up there and took several decent shots of it. So, hey, that certainly got some possibilities. But, boy, it's like anything else. It's new. It's uh, it's tech. And, uh, you know, you, you could spend all kinds of money if you really wanted to. So we kind of cautious about it. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Jimmy Yankee Jr. kept at it. And he invited me a second time. This is... Uh, Oh, about two years later, and then we're at Slinger here, and uh, we're standing together, and he's giving me another demonstration of the drone here. And he even let me take a picture. So, um, And then what really pushed me uh, into the drone, um, again, uh, I participated in one of the Zoom shows here, uh, and uh, there's a gentleman that was showing pictures from the Racine area. And geez, there's a guy from Racine. He must live in Racine. And Mike Uhas got me hooked up with Brian Hetchel, who... Uh, was very instrumental in helping me uh, get the uh, into drone uh, photography. Uh, 
he uh, laid out all the different options and uh, the pros and cons. He helped me with the licensing. He helped me with uh, uh, firmware, with the purchase and everything. And uh, he also took me out before I purchased a drone. And this was, uh, I believe, April or May of this year. And uh, I'm using Brian's drone, but I actually took this picture at Brown Road. Uh, and so that's kind of how I got into it. And uh, there you see Brian uh, in my driveway here. Uh, the drone came in late July. He came down and uh, helped uh, download the firmware and he uh, got it all set up uh, so that uh, we could go out and take pictures that afternoon. This is uh, June 26th of this year. And uh, one of the first uh, drone pictures I took at Brown Road, like I say, it's a, a good location because there's no power lines. It's wide open. There's parking off the uh, street uh, and uh, a fair amount of trains. So uh, same day, uh, first day, uh, southbound ethanol train. And um, not the same day, but uh, we were lucky. Uh, we did it a couple times. Uh, if uh, you, uh, there's a, two trains pass within each other, like 615 and 620. Uh, I believe it's the 339, 340 combination. Uh, uh, and so it's a good uh, chance to practice on the Hiawatha trains here. Uh, reluctant to go real high, but uh, get a little higher here in this picture probably about 100 feet, which is pretty high for me. Uh, my eyesight is not what it's uh, like uh, what it used to be. And so I don't go real high real often. I look in the other direction, uh, 339, 340 combination, again, probably 100 feet in the air. And this uh, is uh, one of the uh, experiences that, uh, um, so I get in Boston, and uh, this was an after church on a Saturday night. And uh, I was going to take a picture. I wanted to go up a little higher in this because there's a lake on the other side of that tree line. But the, I put the drone up in the air and get all kinds of warnings that I'm flying near a uh, restricted facility. And uh, uh, it turns out there's a mental health facility in the industrial park in Boston that I didn't know about. So, you know, it scared me at first. I brought it back down. Then I kind of figured it out and put it back up. But by then the train was there and I didn't exactly get the picture I wanted. But the, there's a, uh, another practice shot at Sturdivant there, in Brown Road in Sturdivant there. Um, this was in uh, mid-July. Uh, Brian and I went out to uh, Highway K in Franksville. And uh, again, this is just 15, 20 feet in the air, but it adds a, a whole new perspective. Uh, uh, northbound 3, 335 and uh, southbound uh, frac sand loads. Doesn't always turn out like you want, uh, especially if the train's moving fast, but the, uh, I have my share of muffs, but they usually... Uh, there's a uh, multiple shot uh, setting that you can take three, five, seven, ten shots all in one uh, shutter release, and that kind of helps uh, solve those kind of problems. But uh, this is a Sturt event here, that Highway 11 Sturt event. And here is a late running, like he's probably two hours late, but got number seven uh, running about two hours late and, and chopped off the engine. This was a real muff, uh, and this was just, uh, oh, like September of this year, I was going to get number eight past the depot in Oconomowoc, and uh, I didn't push the shutter down far enough, so I didn't get any picture here, but I, I didn't want to go away empty-handed, so I took a picture of the, the uh, car there in the depot, so, but uh, they, you know, they're starting to get better, some more, more reliable, this is a XA South Sturt event here. Uh, I did take the uh, drone on the road in July. This is uh, on the BNSF main line. A group of us get together at mile post 27 uh, for the day in Naperville. And this is the Illinois Zephyr uh, about 9, 9.30 in the morning that day. Uh, metro train pushing and boning. Uh, it looks like you're out in the middle of a forest or a country, but this is a heavily populated area. It just happened to be a lot of brush here. And uh, uh, this is the uh, westbound uh, super chair, Santa Fe, uh, Southwest Chief. Eastbound Metro. And we finished the day with the, uh, it was running about four hours late, the uh, uh, Southwest Chief. Uh, and that signal there is for Naperville, uh, about mile post 27.5. Uh, it was uh, grandkids live out east, and uh, on a return trip from east, uh, I was going to try a drone at Horseshoe Curve, but uh, my luck uh, is that we left uh, Washington, D.C., a uh, beautiful sunny morning, and it was rainy and cloudy at uh, Altoona, and also uh, Horseshoe Curve, the uh, observation uh, 
area is closed on, uh, this was a Tuesday, so went over to Crescent, and uh, that's where that uh, bed and breakfast is, which is uh, just down the street from where this photo was taken, but this is a westbound coal train that uh, those helpers just came up, and uh, they, they exchanged crews and uh, continued on. Westbound intermodal train. Little, uh, busy. So we were only there for about two hours. I saw six six trains in two hours, so it was, uh, it was worth the stop. It gives you a whole different perspective. Uh, you know, you got three trains in the picture here. So eastbound uh, trailer train. So that's looking toward Altoona. And it's westbound. Uh, I'm not sure if it was ethanol or what it was, but uh, looking towards Pittsburgh. And that, uh, I think it's called Station in Bed and Breakfast, is about where that red car is. Uh, uh, on the, well, <laughs> there's three or four red cars, about the fourth red car up. is uh, got a nice uh, front porch where you can see trains and listen to the scanner. And, and this is the reason I went there. This is the uh, Crescent Engine Facility. It was closed at the end of the year last year, and I uh, just want to get a picture of it. Uh, uh, it's fully intact, but it's not being used as part of precision railroading. So, at uh, the stir event, uh, trying to chase some clouds, and uh, a good thing I brought the drone down right away because it opened up two minutes after I took this picture. It really, really opened up hard. Uh, westbound number seven at stir event. Uh, another of the dangers or the problems of stir event. You see the background there, the the tall light poles that's actually a prison and uh, you get a warning that you're close to a restricted area but uh, so far i've been able to shoot around the station without being shut down uh, by the uh, warnings and number eight is third event this is a uh, linden station uh, on a trip up north number seven this is uh, at uh, new lisbon you can see the uh, West leg of the Y, the east leg in the background. And uh, again, you're near Volk Field here, so you get a warning that you're like real close to military operating area. And, uh, but I was able to get the picture here without any further permissions. And that's a uh, going view of the same location. Uh, Highway 26, in, uh, which is west of Watertown, number seven. And this was 247 right behind him, and he had one of those. Uh, barn units uh, that had just been through the, from uh, the paint shop uh, with a CQM uh, unit that CP reacquired. Ethanol train, actually it's a double ethanol train at Stirt event. Uh, and uh, this is just a uh, a colorful shot at the Sturtevant station with the uh, mid-train helper on 140, or yeah, 149. And uh, close off the drone stuff. This is a stir event. Like I say, they're starting to get the hang of it. Uh, I'm going to have to get some experience with doing some videos and some experience with a little more altitude. And uh, but I'm just going to take this slowly and uh, still have a fear of like flying over water or flying over uh, fenced in areas that if the drone would go down, I wouldn't be able to get it. But uh, I'm sure I'll get over that. It's been very reliable. I haven't had any any problems now in uh, about six months. So. The 50th anniversary unit, uh, number eight, late running number eight, and number seven. And uh, he had the Air, Air, Aberdeen, Carolina Western private car, which looks like a very nice uh, car on the tail end that day. And special painting scheme and sort of it. And that's just an overall, uh, probably went up pretty close to 400 feet on it, which is the maximum altitude, but uh, uh, the uh, Line to the lower left is the uh, Chicago Y, the upper left is the Milwaukee Y, and the uh, line to the right was the line to Racine that uh, goes as far as Waxdale, which is about two miles down the, the road there. And uh, from practice session, one of those uh, BNSF units that KCS picked up at Franksville, the cabbage factory there. Only time I ever got a suspicious look from an engineer, I generally don't, uh, fly above a train or near a train, but uh, you should give me the evil eye uh, there at Sturtevant. Uh, had the window cracked back like you needed a shield or something, but uh, I didn't get anywhere near him, but you uh, sure gave me the eye. Another shot at Sturtevant. 
And uh, I'm from Racine originally, and uh, this is about all that's left in Racine. There's one freight customer, and they use the Racine uh, siding to uh, store uh, Oak Creek coal trains, and that's what this is. Uh, this used to be a double track main line with five yard tracks on either side of it, it had a yard engine, and uh, a lot going on here. The old engine house that uh, still survives uh, with a different uh, company right now. And uh, we'll close it out with, uh, this was uh, just south of Highway 11 in service called Hiawatha Crossing. It's a nice, um, you gotta kind of know where it is and walk back there, but uh, you could actually uh, get some pretty decent drone shots or just the uh, regular shots uh, with the, uh, I just walked back there one afternoon, put the drone up and uh, caught three or four trains. But you got these water retention ponds, you got a nice path around there. So it uh, makes for it to do pretty decent shots. So, and I believe that's the last drone shot. Oh, I, I, hang on here. <laughs> a couple at the uh, Wisconsin Rapids here. Uh, I have not a lot of experience flying a drone around a yard, and I was a little reluctant. This is the UP train from Adams that had just come in and dropped its train. and um, I was taking pictures of a car pulls up and a guy gets out and, uh, puts a drone up in the air. And so I went over and talked to him and turns out he is uh, an engineer for the CN was going on to work, uh, at four o'clock that day, but he said, I had to get some drone pictures too. So I said, well, if he can do it, I can do it. So, <laughs> so that's that, uh, Wisconsin Rapids. This is at Nakusa Junction. Um, the, uh, they were switching at Nakusa here, uh, and, uh, UP, I pulled out of the way to let him by. And uh, this was a real challenging uh, flight uh, because it was windier in hell. And what do you see in the background, but uh, uh, a substation with all kinds of power lines. And I was afraid I was gonna run into a power line and I didn't wanna be the, the one to knock out the, all the juice to Nakusa, so. <laughs> but anyway, that's, at one time uh, you had the Sioux line, you had the Milwaukee and the uh, CNNW all had their own separate lines here, but. Uh, and that's uh, the uh, South Servant. And uh, we'll get to the final portion here. Uh, we're going to go back to 1982. And this was taken in April 1982. And 1982 was a good time for me in terms of uh, uh, taking train photographs because uh, 1982 was before kids. My wife was working days. I was working nights. And so I had a lot of uh, time to in the daytime. And the reason I went out here, this is a Walworth. Uh, and this is uh, the RTA, I guess it was the RTA at that time, and announced they were going to end service to Walworth later that year, and so we had to get out there. Brother Rob and I got up at five uh, in the morning, got out there, and uh, you could uh, ride from Walworth to a Fox Lake, which uh, my mother uh, actually you know, went along with us and drove the car so that we could uh, get back to Racine. But this is a, the deadhead moved from Fox Lake. It's probably 6, 6.30 in the morning, and uh, he came up deadhead to uh, uh, we got on it, and uh, he had an F40C, which is uh, unusual. Uh, there's only two left. And here we are. We uh, got down to Fox Lake. You can see their new Fox Lake uh, stations under construction in the background. Uh, it's, uh, just like Walworth, the Fox Lake station uh, looked pretty tough. So uh, this is in Racine, uh, April of 1982. And like I say, it's a whole different time. This is the Waukegan turn. Uh, he's got uh, two cars right behind the power that are for uh, tractor loading a case. Uh, you got cars in the freight yard, uh, and he also had a yard engine here. It was double track main line with signals, and like you say, now it's just a, a single track with no customers and uh, very little traffic. Oh, at Sturt event, uh, the Milwaukee was fairly busy. That's a northbound freight at uh, Sturt event, uh, and off to the left of the engine there is a train for Racine. Amtrak uh, 7 with the uh, relatively new uh, F40s and the Superliners were relatively new, only a couple years old at that time. And here we are actually at Racine Junction, Racine. Um, actually a fairly busy train considering this was near the end of the life of the line. Uh, the three cars on the front end came from downtown and uh, three cars on the rear end by the caboose came off the interchange track and they're getting ready to work uh, the Racine industrial plant off to the left. So. Um, this was taken in April 1982. The line was abandoned in August of 82. So, and uh, very hard to find any traces of it uh, in Racine anymore. This is at uh, uh, another uh, Walworth chase. And this is in the evening where the, the train deadheads uh, back to Foxworth after it drops passengers. 
And this is where the uh, Milwaukee line to Fox Lake crosses the Sioux line. If you've been there recently, it's called uh, Prairie Crossing. There's uh, platforms for both tracks, a uh, huge parking lot, looks nothing like this. This was back in the day when it was out in the middle of nowhere. The other side of the diamond there, different train. And they say the purpose was to chase the train out to uh, Walworth. The service is gonna end later that year. Here's crossing the Fox River at the uh, Fox Lake. He's on the embankment that cross over US 12. Uh, this is the east side of the embankment. And I'm on US 12 and that's the west side of the embankment. The weather wasn't very good. The sunlight wasn't good, but uh, did the best I could to try and clean these slides up a little bit. Here it is at Walworth. Uh, for some reason he had to pull forward to change ends, uh, but he was changing ends to head back to uh, Fox Lake for the night. You're crossing Highway 120 as a deadhead move. I took a series of three here to say F40C pushing and that uh, the car is something too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's uh, Wisconsin 120 just south of uh, Fontana. Anyway, the, 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 what I wanted to show um, is uh, the uh, birth of the uh, CNNW uh, STEAM program uh, back in 1982. And uh, so this is a trip that was uh, 13th through the 16th of May, 1982, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, we left early Thursday morning and it turned out to be one of those weekends uh, where it was like the first warm days of uh, uh, the new uh, summer. Uh, weather was in 70s and 80s, and uh, but it was the first time. It was really a, a nice. Uh, this is between uh, West Bend and uh, Key Wascom, uh train 295, which is the overnight train uh, from Chicago to Green Bay. This is just north of uh, uh, Key Wascom, between Quascom and Campbellsport. Um, this is all a bike trail now. You can't get this picture anymore. I probably can't find that engine anymore either. This is at Eden. I understand the Foxy comes down to Eden for a couple customers here, but the uh, uh, south of here where the train is, just south of town here, I can't get that anymore. It's a bike trail. It's at Scott Street in Fond du Lac. And uh, Lakeshore Drive in... Uh, North Fond du Lac with uh, wigwigs. The train yarded there and did some work before continuing on to Green Bay. But anyway, uh, we just got into Fond du Lac and uh, I say it's 9, 10 in the morning, we'd started early and uh, uh, checked out the Sioux line and uh, the train to Milwaukee was just leaving. Uh, it's a relatively short train, uh, maybe uh, 40 or 50 cars and I didn't have any helpers, just two engines and a, a caboose that uh, chased him up by Ren Hill. That's my brother in the weeds there. As you can see, he's in his T-shirt because it was beautiful morning. There's the train uh, about halfway up. Uh, looks nothing like this now. It's double track and uh, but, uh, uh, no helpers on this train. It uh, walked up the hill pretty, pretty uh, uh, steadily. It didn't need any help here, and that's at the top of the hill. Headed back into town to see what was going on. This is at uh, NW uh, Junction, which is on the south side of Fond du Lac where the line to uh, Adams, or excuse me, to uh, Climbing Junction and eventually uh, Janesville and uh, broke off from the uh, line to Milwaukee. Uh, and this is a train from North Fond du Lac to Adams on that line. Again, this is all a bike trail. Now you won't uh, find any remnants of NW Junction or that line anymore. Caught him at the junction here. Uh, he's heading out toward Climbing Junction. So the chase was on. This has got three GP7s and a bunch of boxcars on it. And this was a 10 mile an hour land barge here. It's crossing Highway 41. I like to say there's a, a bike trail bridge that crosses the highway here now. And again, that's my brother in the background there. And we should have chased this thing all the way to Climbing Junction, but we didn't. We got him uh, just off the bridge there, probably the first crossing we could find. And uh, you can see even the crew thought it was a hot day out there. It was beautiful that morning. Here we are at Oakfield. This is down by the uh, Horicon Marsh. Oak Center. I say this is all a bike trail now. And just past Oak Center and uh, 
That's kind of where we broke off the chase. So we headed back into town and a, a northbound Sioux line train had arrived. Now, this is 1982 and there's probably six or eight trains a day on the Sioux line. It wasn't real busy uh, like it is today uh, with the CN. And so this is a unusual, uh, uh, they're hard to catch because you don't know exactly when and where they'd, they'd be in. But anyway, he was in the yard or shops and he was switching. And uh, while we were watching him switch and taking some photographs, this guy backed out of the yard on the northwestern side. And this uh, turned out to be a train that was heading out the line to Ripon, the line that eventually went to the Rapids and uh, Marshfield and Marillon. Uh, but the guy was headed for Ripon this day. So he backed out. Uh, here we are at Marsh Line, which was the name of the junction, semaphores, you know, uh, through the switch. And he pulled forward a little bit, but he wasn't going anywhere because the Sioux Line had the crossing block. And uh, hard to believe in 1982, they were still using smash boards for uh, signaling, uh, but uh, it's like, say, a low density branch line here. Caboose, GP7, can't get any of this anymore. There's some waiting for the smash board to clear up. And then we're off, uh, on a ch again, we probably should have chased this guy to all the way to Ripon. Uh, I guess the line is all torn out. And, uh, Ripon's only served by the WSOR now. The uh, UP CNNW doesn't go there anymore. Crossing Highway 41. I'm told there used to be six different uh, at-grade crossings over Highway 41 back in the day between Milwaukee and Green Bay, but this was one of them. And, uh, uh, it wasn't built to interstate standards, but people were traveling pretty fast. So this is kind of a risky move. But... And here we are west of uh, Highway 41. Uh, I'm not exactly sure where. We took a couple shots. And then uh, we returned to Fond du Lac. And uh, over on the CNW side of the yard there, we found a couple of alcos that have been uh, switching all day that were resting. But uh, over on the Sioux line side of things, uh, something was up because the crew van was out at the north end of the yard. There was an engine sitting there. And uh, sure enough, uh, there was a southbound train uh, arriving Fond du Lac for a crew change, and they're going to slap the helper on the rear end. So uh, Chase was on. Here's crossing Highway 41. And uh, if you've ever experienced this in the Sioux line days, I mean, they were slow. They were five, 10 miles an hour. They just ground up the hill here. Uh, and so you had a lot of opportunities to get a lot of shots uh, further up the hill here. This is all double track, uh, you know, heavy duty main line now, CN. He had a helper on, uh, like I say, that was put on the rear end. And the neat thing about this is the helper was cut off on the fly as he got to the top of the hill. Well, it's kind of neat to see. And there the helper is drifting back down the hill there toward Fond du Lac. Now, this was Thursday night. Uh, you know, the convention was starting. We, geez, we got a hotel reservation. We better get moving. And uh, getting pretty late. This is probably six o'clock. Uh, Nina Menashe Depot, I we shot on the way up from the no train there, but uh, I'm not even sure this building still stands. It looks pretty rough. Okay, this is the next morning. Got up early, seven o'clock uh, in the morning, and this is one of the uh, local freight jobs going to work in uh, Green Bay from Norwood Yard. Uh, this uh, side of the street uh, line is uh, long gone out also. And we lucked out over on the northwestern side of things. Um, this is a train that was going out the line to uh, Wausau. Uh, he was going out as far as Shawano, and he had a bunch of tanker cars he was going to put in the siding for storage on the way out. But uh, um, consider it real lucky uh, we caught a train on this line because there aren't any uh, trains, there aren't any lines there anymore. So this is North Green Bay, the uh, switch job heading out uh, toward Shawano. Here he is crossing over the Milwaukee Roads line that went north to uh, Channing and Antonaga, uh, and uh, it was still in use at this date by the ENLS. Uh, Pulaski Depot, one of the green and yellow depots, and uh, if you can make it out over in the uh, uh, right side of the uh, roof line of the depot, there's a sign that says bus stops here, 
this is the route of the Flambeau 400 that was seasonal uh, last year of its service. And uh, so uh, during the uh, non-Christmas season, uh, a bus uh, substituted for the train. And it's interesting, you know, 11 years later, there's still a bus stop sign on the depot uh, at Pulaski. But this is where those tank cars were dropped. Uh, Bondwell. And uh, at the tower in Shawano, I'm not even sure if this still stands anymore or if it's been preserved. Um, the uh, Northwestern line is long gone. Uh, it's still served by the, uh, I don't know, maybe it's Foxy or, or, Sula, or CN. I'm not sure who still serves Shawano, but uh, there's still rail service here, but the, off the line it's crossing, not the line it's on. And Caboose and Shawano Tower. And there is a depot and they, went to work doing some switching and whatnot. So this is uh, 38 miles west of Green Bay. So we decided to uh, let's head back into Green Bay, see what's going on, see what we can figure out. And um, in the coach shards, uh, they were assembling a display of uh, equipment for the uh, uh, premier event of the 1385 and also for the CNNW Historical Society Convention. So uh, C628 looked like it just came out of the paint shop there at uh, North Green Bay, uh, was setting, uh, but not much else right at this point in time. Uh, caught a couple of switch jobs, Green Bay and Western in their yard, uh, North Green Bay. CNNW switch job uh, with a caboose. I'm not exactly sure where he was headed, but he's uh, Elko powered. A lot of the Elko units were moved from uh, South Dakota to the Green Bay area for their final years. And so this was the time you'd see Elkos in Green Bay. And I'm not sure how we got word that train 281 was coming into town, but uh, this is train 281 from Chicago that uh, is a, at Tavel, which is where the uh, uh, Northwestern crossed the Milwaukee on the south side of Green Bay. So we got word he was coming, got a picture of Tavel, got a picture at Broadway Tower, which is a, a extremely small uh, tower. And uh, then the, they were yarding the train. You see an uncle switching the yard in the background there. And this is, you can still get a picture from this bridge, although it looks completely different. Uh, they're pulling up to the yard office. Uh, they cut off the power and take it to the house. Uh, and if you look in the background, there's a lot of stored units. Remember this is 1982 and we were still in a pretty deep recession in this country and uh, uh, not unique to Green Bay, but there was a lot of stored units uh, all over the rail system back, back in this era. So you can see a pile of them in the background there. No, I'm not, again, I don't remember if it was all word of mouth or scanner or we actually had official information, but this is the uh, Escanaba to Green Bay uh, way freight with the six, 628s on it. Uh, and he was out at um, uh, having a uh, switching. <laughs> I just can't remember the city. Uh, uh, about 20 to 30 miles north of Green Bay. Ocanto. He said Ocanto. There he is uh, switching at Ocanto. He's on the Ocanto River Bridge here. And then uh, he's underway from Ocanto, probably at uh, Sumaco, where this picture was taken, but heading for the uh, yard in Green Bay. It's a train out of Escanaba, the daily uh, way freight. Here he is rounding the curve at Duck Creek. Uh, Duck Creek is where the line to Wausau and the line to Escanaba split. Uh, just west of the yard in Green Bay. And I'm actually standing on the line to Wausau here as the train uh, enters the yard uh, from the Escanaba line. And same routine, although we're in, looking uh, west instead of uh, east, and uh, again from the bridge in the middle of the yard there where they cut off the power and take it to the house. Look at all the boxcars. You don't see that in the freight yard anymore. And uh, this is down by Broadway Tower. I'm not sure what the switch uh, crew was up to, but uh, interesting enough, that 4377 was the same engine that was on the train out to, uh, from Fond du Lac out to uh, Burpin, So, And this is a GBW switch job uh, coming back from the east side of town, uh, crossing the Fox River, the transfer caboose. It's a Broadway tower heading toward, uh, I'm not sure if they're heading to their yard there or if they're going to go all the way to Norwood. And back at the coach yards, uh, some more equipment arrived and it looks like the switch crew and maybe a, a foreman or something trying to figure out uh, exactly what Mr. Berger wanted here, but uh, they seem to be uh, contemplating what uh, their next move is going to be here. 
we headed down to the Norwood yard, which is the, the where the uh, roundhouse and uh, yard for the Green Bay and Western uh, located and all the local switch jobs were coming back. So we had a congregation of uh, local switch engines here Norwood that were going through various forms of uh, repair and servicing and changing out and parking and whatnot. So. But the, uh, the, the main event, uh, usually in late afternoon, train one, the train across uh, the Green Bay and Western to Winona uh, is put together. Here's the power for train one, uh, getting ready to double and triple up a train. That's very small, short yard with a lot of grade crossings close by. So they, they put the train on three or four tracks, they pump up the air on house air, and then they double and triple up the train and head west. And that's what they're about to do here. They're probably on the first uh, cut here. Uh, Classic uh, Green Bay and Western shot. Doesn't look like this anymore. And the chase was on and uh, it, it runs pretty close to uh, Highway uh, 54, uh, west out of Green Bay, uh, Oneida and uh, Seymour, Black uh, Creek. So these are just some grab shots. Uh, first time I'd ever caught train uh, one. Uh, so took a whole bunch of pictures here. Show you a couple more here. Maybe Brian can recognize some of these locations, but uh, 40 years ago, it's, it's hard to remember. Highway 54 off to the uh, right there. And one more after this. So that was our chase. It was starting to get dark out. Also, this was Friday night of the convention. There were slides back at the hotel and uh, you know whatnot. So uh, we didn't want to stay out too late, but the, we got some good shots of the uh, one leaving town. This is the next morning, uh, Saturday morning. Uh, this is a boat train coming back from Kiwani, uh, uh, like an overnight or a midnight boat train. At the, and he's pulling back into town. Uh, heading to Norwood Yard uh, along the side of the street tracks, which aren't there anymore. A little bit uh, different perspective. And then uh, this was uh, the the public uh, display over kicked off about uh, 10 that morning. This is the Northwestern Business Cards. 403 was assigned to the Wisconsin Division at the time, and uh, that was there. Uh, and this is the coach yards, and you can see uh, some piggyback trailers from the Falcon train and some uh, lineup of power here. The uh, the Jeep close to us had some kind of special, I don't know if it was a Caterpillar engine or had a special engine experiment, a, a GP50, a C628 here. GP40 all opened up and there's the star of the show, the 1385, which is uh, about to uh, inaugurate the CNNW's uh, steam program. And it was all in conjunction with the CNNW Historical Society meeting in Green Bay. So it was a, it was a great weekend. Uh, that's kind of what the, the display looked like from uh, the 1385's uh, platform. While we were there, the uh, Milwaukee switch job uh, came through. They had uh, been in their east, side, east of the river line, uh, uh, south of uh, where they crossed the river. I mean, north of where they crossed the river and they used CNNW trackage rights and then crossed on the Green Bay and Western's bridge to service their customers on the east side of Green Bay. But uh, he rolled through here during the display. There you see the GP50 and the, you know, some of the cars on display here and the caboose and then a bunch of box cars. Proof that I was there. And uh, Again, I'm not sure, I don't recall how we got word, uh, but again, uh, somebody tipped us off that the uh, Escanaba Way Freight was heading into town. So we got out and by Sumaco and got pictures of coming into town. Here is at Duck Creek. Uh, like I say that's the line of Wausau there, the route of the Flambeau 400 at one time. And uh, he's on the uh, line Escanaba, route of the Peninsula 400 at one time. So, And um, Again, uh, my memory fails me on how we found out that the NLS was heading west. At this time, the uh, or north, uh, at this time, they still ran out of the Milwaukee's yard uh, at Oakland Avenue. They didn't go into the CNNW yard at this point in time. So this is on the Milwaukee Road. It's an ENLS train up to Channing. 
and uh, it's got two leased uh, Conrail units on it, the uh, units that never worked for Conrail. But remember, this was the uh, early 80s when uh, uh, motive power was uh, uh, available everywhere, and uh, ENLS leased these. Uh, and I understand they never turned a wheel for Conrail. Uh, shot a couple more pictures of this guy heading north. Uh, the problem I was facing is that, uh, you know, I talked about having freedom. Uh, well, my wife's friend was getting married this weekend and she didn't make me go to the wedding, but she didn't want me to be at the reception, which started at six. So like, hey, I can take a couple more pictures, but I got to head, head back to Milwaukee. So took more, uh, a couple more pictures of the enthusiastic brakeman here that uh, waved at us at every crossing. Uh, and this was a 10 mile an hour train, so it was really easy chase. And this is just north of uh, Green Bay. And I had to head back to Milwaukee because uh, I had some social obligations. Uh, but I did get in the car the next morning. Um, the uh, Green Bay and Western had a uh, roundhouse uh, tour available for the Northwestern Historical Society. Uh, they really didn't have much out other than this uh, Homer McGee unit, which was just recently repainted. Uh, and they were real cautious about where they wanted us to go because somebody apparently had fallen in a pit on a previous tour a couple months earlier. And so uh, it was almost really a non-event, but uh, did get a couple pictures here. Uh, but the main uh, star was, uh, this was uh, when the uh, 1385 was gonna kick off on its run to Milwaukee uh, with the Prosperity Special. Uh, it really makes you feel old. That little kid in the red jacket on the sidewalk there is probably 45 or 50 years old now. <laughs> it's a uh, uh, how fast time goes by, but this is at the Green Bay Depot before they kicked off. And uh, I threw this one in just because uh, you don't see this anymore either, but there's a ship docked <laughs> on the Fox River right next to the, the depot there and uh, uh, shows you how that form of transportation has also changed uh, drastically over the years. But this was just before they took off. This was supposed to be the money shot on the Fox River, but I mean, it was a, a foggy, dreary, a little bit of rain day. And so I did the best I could to try and dress this up a little bit, but uh, here he's crossing the Fox River, uh, heading down the shoreline uh, to Milwaukee. This is at Denmark. Uh, again, it wasn't a very good day for photographs. Um, but I could say nobody in, uh, could ever imagine the scene and W would run a steam engine on their lines in 1982, but here it was happening. This is at a service stop in Maribel. The tracks are gone from Maribel. They only go as far as Denmark. Um, like I say, it was a steam engine with some modern equipment to show how much uh, the railroad had advanced over the years. Uh, and uh, they're doing a service stop here. He's taking off, and this is a, pretty much the inauguration of the uh, last about five years, six years of the CNNW steam program before uh, they they tired of it. And uh, it's back at uh, the museum in uh, Mid-Continent. Uh, and I'm just closing out. I'm saying I'm from Racine. I wasn't around when this was happening, but this is the 2900 series uh, uh, unit uh, or steam engine uh, helping the Peninsula 400 south on at Racine. I believe it's a Joe Bush shot I have in my collection. Uh, and probably about 10 years later, this is when the, the Baker brothers started taking photographs. This is with an Instamatic camera, one of the commuter 400s, about 8.30 in a very cold February night. And uh, we can do another show on some of these photographs uh, next time around. But that's my show. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it didn't uh, bore you keep you going too long here. So <clears throat> good evening. Uh, thank you again uh, to Al Baker for a wonderful program. And uh, does anybody here in the meeting room have any questions for Al? If you do, uh, please come up to the microphone. Nobody. Okay. Um, then we will open it up to the Zoom people. Uh, Zoom people, do you have any questions? Anybody? Great presentation, Al. And I'll just leave it at that. Wonderful. Thank you. I, uh, I'm not too familiar with all those places he was talking about, but I thoroughly enjoyed them. They were really nice. Uh, very well done. Thank you. Did you hear that? Yes. Yep, good, good. Uh, and Al says, thanks, Fred. Um, I'd like to say thanks to Dave Nelson for... Um, setting up tonight's program. Dave uh, is also responsible for setting up next month's program, and that features uh, a look back at 20 years ago uh, from Tom Hoffman, uh, uh, the longest running series in Wisconsin NRHS chapter history. 
uh, every year, Tom takes a look back at 20 or so years prior. Although a couple of years ago, you did 50 years ago. That was, that was a delight. Uh, so that'll be at our uh, January meeting. Um, remember once again, uh, for members next, next week, Friday, we're gonna have our informal Zoom um, Railroad Gab Fest next Friday, uh, December 9th. Then on Tuesday, December 20th, uh, is our uh, online slideshow uh, featuring uh, Ed Burkhart, um, L. Elrond Lawrence, um, Andy Worley, Ed Kohler, and Mike Uhas. So that's, uh, you'll get emails about that. I hope you can uh, attend. And of course, in there is the holidays, and so I'm going to wish you all a happy holiday season and um, and remind you to uh, pay your dues for 2023. Uh, thank you to all members who are members of the Wisconsin chapter. It takes a little bit of money to run the chapter uh, and your dues basically cover your subscription to Sparks and Cinders that our editor Keith Schmidt does a wonderful job of 10 times a year. Thank you, Keith. Um, and, um, you know, helps us with uh, our Zoom and, and stuff like that. So thank you for renewing. Uh, and if you have not joined, please do so. Uh, www.nrhswis.org. Uh, and finally, special thanks to the gentleman whose back is to you here, uh, Sal Siofani. Thank, thank you. Sal is one of our tech people, helps us out here every month. Uh, and he's, he's our gatekeeper. Uh, tonight as well. So uh, thank you, Sal, uh, for, for all your help. That'll, uh, that'll end our meeting. Uh, and uh, again, we'll do the, uh, the Gab Fest next, next week, Friday. Thanks, everybody, for coming.